Mike's on. He's ready to go. On the fan. New York Sports Radio. Mike's on. Mike's on. He'll get you the sports and it when and he can. It's Mike Francis on the fan. Sports Radio 66 and 101.9 FM. From the studios of WFAN, this is Mike Zahn, Francesca on the fan on this uh, Thursday, the 25th day of October. Some bad weather supposedly heading our way on the weekend. Nor'easter could be heading our way on on Saturday into Sunday, so we'll see how uh, that works out as we start to move into the real football season. You know, the Red Sox have made quick work of the Dodgers. We are one Red Sox winning game three away from really all the air going out of the World Series and out of the baseball season. Uh, The hot stove is still weeks away. But this is the time when you get that chill in the air and you see the Halloween decorations everywhere. And you start to see, you know, the first of the, you know, turkey things and, and Christmas commercials that everything changes in football. Just look. Look how many college games there are tonight. Look how many college games there are tomorrow night. Now there'll be college games almost every single night of the week. You got NFL, obviously, Monday, Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night. So if you're a football fan this time of year, from now through New Year's, you basically get football almost on a daily basis. You really do. And if you like this time of the year, especially when the colleges start to sprinkle, especially the MAC, start to sprinkle their games into the midweek, which they start really tonight, and then they'll start to dot them even on Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights and Thursday nights into Friday nights uh, right through. And you're so now you start to get wall-to-wall as we have the – we're a couple of days from the second season. This Sunday – always marks to me what I call the second curtain raiser for the NFL, the second debut week for the NFL, because it's the first one after the World Series. It's the first one when you hit late October, early November, and everything changes. The feeling about football changes. The feeling in the seasons, you know, there's no more warmth in the air up here in the Northeast. Uh, You know, uh, the weather's changing. The leaves start to fall, and you get a different feel about football. You really do. Now, unfortunately, in this town, there's not a whole lot left. And right now, I cannot, and, and maybe it has something to do with the Giants already backing up the truck, and, you know, you heard the at the top of the hour. You heard the the soundbite from uh, Sherma, but the Giants, hey, they can't be surprised by questions about the mood in their locker room when you back up the truck and start trading off run stoppers and starting cornerbacks when you haven't even played half your games. When you do that a week before the trade deadline, you're going to raise speculation about what's coming with your team and i've never seen so much attention paid to how who's going to be traded this week and who's not i mean lists of quarterbacks and you know most of the guys that people are putting out there they're not going to get traded out i'm telling you right now i don't think anybody's trading for for ryan fitzpatrick or for sam bradford uh, or tyrod taylor or probably even bridgewater okay i think the saints will uh keep him. I think he's there as an insurance policy against, God forbid, something happens to their Hall of Fame quarterback at this advanced age. They don't want their season to be over. And let's be honest, the Saints without Breeze is not the same team. But they want to have someone there that could actually step in and give them a fighting chance to win a game. They know they have a season. They know they have a playoff season. They're hoping they have a special season. They're hoping they can get a home game get a bye, get a home game, and then hope that they can have a big game against the Rams, knowing that right now, barring something unforeseen, all roads in the NFC will lead through the Rams. I mean, that's going to be a foregone conclusion, I think, before too many weeks are gone. And then you have the idea of Willie Ohne. Would something change with Eli Manning? And the question is, is Bortles playing himself? Now, Bortles has started to say things on there that you don't want to say, using words like scapegoat and stuff like that. 
the coach didn't handle it. Well, see, that coach has got a problem handling stuff because he's got an edge to him, and he doesn't mind hurting feelings. So when he sends a, co- uh, a starting quarterback out there on a short leash, which is not what you want to do, you want to send him out there with a belief that he can do the job. You don't want to send him out there basically threatening him on the way out the door, which is what he did. Will they be interested? Will they change their mind before Tuesday? Will Tom Coughlin change his mind? Will Eli change his mind with his, with his uh, no trade? Does something happen over this week that changes that where some team that has a contending situation – which has a pretty good team, loses a quarterback. Odds are it won't happen. Could it happen? No, it's always possible. So, obviously, once we get past next Tuesday, all the speculation ceases to exist. And there's been more of it this year, and I didn't even bring up Carr. And Eli, who would be the two most attractive quarterbacks on those lists, at this stage of their career. So uh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of talk about trades, more than I've ever seen before. That, that's almost like a change because a lot of years there wouldn't even be a trade. Or maybe there'd be one. There's already been a lot. Uh, and I think that people are quicker now to move uh, disgruntled players. They're also quicker to break things down than they used to be. Teams used to have more patience. In the old days, you would never dump a, quarter of a, a coach after one or two years. You'd give them more than that. Now, they'll dump a coach after one year. They'll dump a first-round pick after two years. The old days, you used to keep a first-round pick on your roster for five seasons. I mean, even if he was lousy, you'd keep him on a roster for five years. He never got He had a five-year stay no matter what he did. He might have been on the bench, but he had a five-year stay. That doesn't happen anymore. Teams are much quicker to jettison guys than they used to be. So it's a very different, very different situation now as you get into this part of the season. And there's nothing worse, nothing, nothing in any sport than worse than being a team that had expectations and then finds itself, you know, sitting one and six after seven games. Because other guys are, ah, you know what, I'm out of here. Or, or, let me get to week 10 or 11, and I can slide onto that IR, which, you know, starts to happen, too. And teams start to worry about, you know, not wanting a guy to get hurt or playing a guy that they don't like getting hurt because they don't want to owe him any extra money. So all that plays into this, and you got guys who start to think about their, you know, and coaches will always threaten a player with, hey, this is your video resume. You can't hide. If you're looking to get a job somewhere else next year, they're going to come look at all these games. So this is what you're going to put on your resume, so you better go out there and play hard. We're watching. Everybody's watching. And they're they're, they're right, they are. But they're watching the game. They're not watching practice. They're not watching what's going on in the meeting rooms. They're not watching when you're showing up and when you're not and how big your heart's into it or how much you're into it or how much you're putting your body into it. So it's a very tough time on a team like the Giants right now. And you're also looking at a situation where guys are on their way out the door. You have a franchise quarterback who a lot of people think is about to be moved or mo- or changed in some way. Either he goes to the bench or he's going to uh, share time or, you know, this is his last year or whatever it might be. So with that, you have a very highly touted and uh, very, you know, premier pick in Barkley, and you have the recently paid Beckham. So it is a utter nightmare and a first-year head coach. So it is a and a first-year general manager who's been ill and who's not a young man. So, boy, it has really turned into a mess for the Giants. As for the Jets, we talked about getting a split in these two games and how nice that would be for them if they could. It wasn't going to be easy. It was going to be rather difficult. Odds are they weren't going to get one. They didn't do the first. Now they try to do the second as a big underdog in Chicago. They're going to have to play their best game this season to win there. And they've had the injuries pile up on them. You know, Sam needs a Nunwa. He needs Bilal Pal. He's lost Bilal Pal. Uh, Bilal Pal. He's lost some of his key guys, and that hurts. 
So they're going to have to play their best game in Chicago. Now, Chicago hasn't figured out how to win these games yet. They've figured out how to play from scrimmage. They haven't figured out how to close games yet. That takes a little while, and they haven't learned that yet. Because they were capable of closing all but the Pat game, and they stayed in the Pat game. They actually took a lead in the second quarter. They stayed within a touchdown. They scored a lot of points against them. They made the game a little closer. Now you're throwing into the end zone a Hail Mary at the end of the game. I mean, that with down a touchdown. That's not, you know, being right in it, but they were within hailing distance. And they have been in all their games, but they still are only three and three. Despite all their good work, they're only three and three. And a loss this week, and they'd have a worse record than the Jets, and they would be three and four and kind of reeling themselves. That division's a little weird right now. Minnesota's not complete, although they're looking at, they, it looks like they're getting Griffin back. If they get Griffin and Cook back, that could be a very good team. I don't buy the Packers. I'm going to learn a lot about them these next two weeks when they're going to be big on the dogs. When was the last time you saw the Packers be a 10-point underdog? They're a 10-point underdog this week against the, uh, against the Rams. They're at the Rams this week. They're at the Packers, uh, the Pats next week, on the road both weeks. Aaron Rodgers, you always give him his due, but that defense that I watched San Francisco go up and down the field on just embarrass scares me. Scares me. Packers have lost that aura. We'll find out a little bit about them in the next couple of weeks. Got football tonight, obviously. Miami and Houston. Houston was out of it three weeks in. Now they're four and three and leading that division. That's how things can change. So that's where we are. Got a lot of football to get to. We'll sprinkle some other stuff in. The Mets, let me just update you. Here's what I can tell you about the Mets right now. Number one, I know there was this rumor about a mystery candidate. There is no mystery candidate. The three candidates, all the three candidates. My understanding is all three still have a chance. All three bring th uh, very different skill sets to the table. But all three still are in the mix. It will be actually cut the two before a decision is made, is my understanding. But that hasn't happened yet. They will have a general manager in place by the meetings. But there is no, you know, there's been rumor the last couple of days that this is mystery candidate. There's not. It's these three guys that have been chronicled, you know, very different, coming at it from very different places, very different ages, very different backgrounds. All of them still alive from my understanding, all having some, all having some support for their candidacy, let's put it that way. And knowing that they have to inherit the guys they have to inherit, including Omar, knowing that they have to inherit the manager and the pitching coach, understanding what the process is and what their plan is. So, you know, in terms of, you know, how they see this, so we'll see what happens. But those are the three guys. We'll see which one wins out. But uh, there's no extra guys, and uh, they're not far enough along yet to declare anybody a winner, from my understanding. So that's it for a Thursday. We'll get everything rolling right after this.